What is going on? It's your boy, former NFL and AFL defensive back, Eric Crocker. And we're here breaking down film of the 49ers 2023 draft picks. We're going to stick to the receivers and defensive backs. And first and foremost, we're starting off with Jair Brown, safety out of Penn State. What does the film tell us? What do I think? <laughs> Combine testing, player comps, all that. All right, we're going to break all that stuff down and really dive into the prospect, the player with examples on film of this. I didn't want to be a guy that just highlights and things like that. Matter of fact, there's not one takeaway as far as like an interception or forced fumble in the clips that I have. But we do know that he does that. And I think I know why. All right, we're going we're gonna to show all of that. The good, the bad, the things that I feel like are questionable, and, of course, player comps. All right, so Jair Brown, who is he? Safety out of Penn State. Uh, 5'11", 203 pounds, decently long arms, 31 and a quarter inch arms, all right? Did not test well. So as far as being a trade C safety, he's not quite that. 4'6", 5", and the 40-yard dash, 32 and a half inches on the vertical jump, uh, 9'11", broad jump. You, you guys don't need me to tell you this. Dude. These are all things y'all can look up, all right? But I kind of want to paint a picture because going into his film, it's like, well, well, I don't know exactly what to expect. He got drafted. I didn't know a whole lot about him. My co-host, Brian Peacock, locked on 49ers. He knew more about him. He watched him. He said, Croc, I think you're going to like this guy. Okay. So I said, okay, let's look at the film. Now, he did have a third-round grade, so they had him pretty high. And as far as his total score, so they have like a score breakdown thing on NFL.com. He was number one safety. And some people, my guy Le uh, Le Ledger uh, Doosable, had him as his safety two, second-best safety in this class, regardless of – the testing numbers. So again, a lot of people that go off a of film, they really like what they saw. So we're going to dive into the film. The first thing that stood out to me on Jair Brown's, Brown's film, and I think we're supposed to start calling him Tig. All right. So Tig Brown, Jair Brown. The first thing that jumped out to me was how many different spots he lines up in. This is not just a guy where, you know, you see a lot of these vanilla defenses and they just kind of line the guy up. That wasn't the case with him. They put him at too high safety. He'd be a single high safety. He'd be down in the box. They did a bunch of different things with him, and we're going to get into all of those things as well. But just seeing the versatility and not trying to hide him, especially for a guy that did not test well at the combine. Now, 4.65 at the combine, came back and ran a 4.58 at his pro day, but they said, no, nah, we're not going to try to hide you, regardless of who we're playing against, regardless of who we're playing against. So is this a guy that you're going to be like, you know what, we're going to play man coverage on slot receivers? With his athletic traits, you'd think, no. But Penn State didn't seem to mind. They would line them up over slots versus Ohio State. Abuka, whatever his name is, like that's a legit receiver. Probably going to be a first-round receiver at Ohio State next year. They lined him up over the slot against him, uh, played in the slot against tight ends. So this is a guy that they definitely were not afraid to kind of do different matchup type stuff and say, we're going to put you in man. Now, he did not live in man coverage, okay? He did not live in man coverage. I didn't see a whole lot of it. But it did not look like they were afraid to put him in man coverage. That was one thing that kind of stood out to me right away with some of the man reps that I saw. Next thing, I'd say the probably the thing that I loved the most outside of him being able to line up everywhere was his pursuit. Okay. And when we talk about his interception numbers, 10 over the last two years, nobody in college football had more than that over the last two years, 10 interceptions. Well, of course, because look how he flies around. Look, when you have guys that fly around, and just go just almost like a chicken with his head cut off, flying around, trying to make plays, trying to get to the ball, all right? Great pursuit. That was something that every game film that I turned on, you see that for sure, all right? He does not take plays off. He's trying to get to the ball, and he's flying around. There were times, I mean, he's covering one guy, peel off of the guy that he's covering, and then still make a tackle on someone that he wasn't even – uh, initially guarding. I mean, he, he he does these things seamlessly, too. You would think that maybe that was part of his responsibility, but nah, it's just the way that he plays football. And I'm like, okay, I'm starting to see why the 49ers like this guy. People that play fast like that, you should put yourself in positions to make plays. Now, I, and for those of you who watch a lot of me, I don't watch highlights. So his interceptions, I don't know how he got them, all right? But I do know when you fly around like this and you're putting yourself just around the ball, tip balls, overthrow balls, uh, you are more likely to reap the benefits of those. And we saw that with guys like uh, Tashawn Gibson for the San Francisco 49ers. He, he had, what, four or five interceptions last year? 
They weren't just, oh, man, perfect coverage, turn my head around, jump up, high point the ball. No, it, tip ball, boom, interception. Tip ball, boom, pick. Overthrow ball, boom, interception. Like, it's just some guys have a natural knack for being around the ball. And Tishon Gibson, I mean, when we talk about natural knack for it, what, 32 interceptions in his career in the NFL? Like, he takes the ball away. And some guys just have a knack for that. And it looks like because of his pursuit, Brown definitely does a great job of putting himself in position to – he's going to recover fumbles. Now, listen, Talano Hufunga, another guy, right? What does he do? Take the ball away. Why is he always Johnny on the spot? Why in the divisional round playoffs when a punt gets blocked and the ball is in the air and everybody's trying to find where it's at? Well, who, who lucks up and gets it? Talano Hufunga scores a touchdown. That was a big touchdown, right? against the Green Bay Packers for the 49ers. Well, of course he did because of how he flies around. So when we see Hufunga make plays, we see Gibson make plays, and you kind of plug Brown into that as well, they're just guys that, maybe again, not the best traitsy guys, but have a knack for being around the ball. And I think it has to start with pursuit. Now, one thing that I noticed with his pursuit is sometimes he can come in a little reckless. And we saw that with Hufunga. Hufunga is prone to Miss a tackle or so. And I saw this with Brown as well. There's times where he's just kind of flying in or maybe doesn't wrap up. Is he going for the big hits? Like Those are things where, you know, I, I haven't had a chance to talk to him, so I don't know. But I see him come in and sometimes just miss tackles. I don't know if he's closing his eyes, whatever the case is. There's more than enough tackles that I've seen him do, especially like playing around the line of scrimmage. You see him playing there, going in, making tackles, uh, coming from depth, making tackles, big hits. Like, those things are all over the film. The pursuit is there. But you will still miss tackles. And I think he comes in a little hot sometimes. Now, like Hufunga, I don't want him to tone that down. Like, I'm not telling him, hey, tone down how aggressive you are. Now, you would rather have a, to tell a guy, tone it down a little bit, as opposed to, hey, man, can you pick up the aggressiveness? Right? Because a lot of times you got to tell a guy to pick it up. He probably just don't got it. All right? But he clearly has it. And at times... You see a missed tackle here and there. But the tackling, I thought, for the most part, was pretty good. You see him work around the line of scrimmage, all right, as a box safety. And he did not worry so much about, okay, there's a body on me. I got to disengage, knife in, make the tackle. Okay, they're trying to run outside of me. Let me keep my outside shoulder free, still make the tackle. He did a lot of those things around the line of scrimmage very well. So I think when you see some of these misses, you might be like, oh, man, can he tackle or is he bad at it? I didn't come across thinking he's a bad tackler. I just came across thinking, ah, he missed some tackles. <laughs> All right. There is one thing I'm worried about. We haven't gotten there quite yet. Another thing I felt like they did with him that showed up was him being a robber safety. And this was something that I'm not sure the 49ers would do under Wilkes. I haven't studied Wilkes defense. That's not really kind of what I do on, you know, with my show and my platform. But I know Jimmy Ward really wanted to do a lot more of that with D'Amico Ryans and Robert Sala. And he's like, man, like, I love what these other safeties are doing. They're able to play robber. Well, Brown was able to play robber at times. And you see him kind of come down. He has good eyes. He understands, you know, where he needs to be to take away, like, the throwing lane in that window. Sometimes he'd be able to do it while staring at the quarterback. And I think that's really cool, too. Like, he did a really great job of that. See him come down, have nice big hits, et cetera. And there was one play against Ohio State near the end zone where he took away two routes, right? He had one crosser, boom, he kind of walled that off, then came and walled off the other one, and then the quarterback had to hold on to the ball too long, get sacked. I think he fumbled, turnover on down. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell watching the all-22. But, like, that was good. And when you start to talk about, like, instincts and things like that, I saw it from coverage with his – you know, ability to kind of put his foot in the ground and get downhill right now, not wasting any time in pursuit to the ball. There were a bunch of other clips I really could have added. But you see the instincts as a robber safety as well. So I'm curious to see if the 49ers, you know, add a little bit more of that. Add a little bit more. I saw them do some of that with Hufunga. Can you do some of that with Jair Brown as well? Because I think that's something that is a legit strength of his. I'd say if there was one thing that I'm worried about with Jair Brown, he played a lot, a lot of single high. They lined him up there, and I thought for the most part he was good. But there were a few plays that kind of worried me a little bit. And I wonder if the lack of speed or pure speed, right, 4 6 5, 40 yard dash, is something where, you know, on this, you know, deep throw down the right sideline, he's just a step late. Or 
this deep throw down the left side, the left sideline, he just doesn't get there. Or, man, this running back burst up the middle and he's trucking towards the end zone and he just doesn't get there, right? And it's like, ah, oh. like, is his speed in the open field running sideline to sideline or trying to chase guys vertically down the field, is that going to be an issue? And when you start to look at the lack of at top end athleticism, I think that's where if there is one place where it could bite him, it would be there. All right. Now, if he didn't have that issue, then we're not talking about a late third round pick with the what 87th overall pick. We ain't talking about that. If he was a 4-4 guy, we're talking about him being in the first round with the playmaking ability, with the uh pursuit, with the, you know, the high-end traits, the captain and leadership abilities and all those things that he possesses if he ran faster and was more athletic that vertical jump was 37 inches instead of 32 broad jump was 10 5 instead of 9 11 then he wouldn't be there available at that at, the, at the, what pick 87 or whatever Fortnite was traded up to get him at but since he has to play with this i'm curious to see well how does he master being not the most athletic guys and if you look at guys with similar traits guys like tashawn gibson <laughs> Right. Tayshawn Gibson's numbers from a height, weight and athleticism standpoint are virtually identical, virtually identical. It is as close to a prospect as you can get. Another guy, Ryan Clark, plays a lot like Ryan Clark. Uh, there's a guy that some of y'all may remember. A lot of y'all might not. 49er player. They got him. Uh, his name was Lorenzo Jerome. All right, Lorenzo Jerome, 2017, that was Kyle Shanahan's first class. And he started, I want to say Lorenzo Jerome started week one, maybe even week two. And then a few year, weeks later, he was just cut. Like, you're not even on the team. And I don't even know if he's been on the NFL team since then. That was like one of the wildest things for a guy to work really hard through training camp, you know, make the team, start games, and then you're just never, ever in the NFL again. And that's how the NFL is. It's a wild place. All right. And then the last person that he kind of reminds me of is Quandre Diggs. And we watched Quandre Diggs play for the Lions. We've definitely seen him play for the Seahawks and his ability to take the ball away. And all of these guys have something in common. Not the most traitsy guys. Maybe play a little bit more with, you know, uh, anticipation and, you know, being a step ahead mentally as opposed to physically. Playmaking ability, right? Like, wh why did Ryan Clark play as long as he did for Super Bowl teams? Uh, to Sean Gibson, why does he play as long as he has, you know, 32 career interceptions? Uh, Lorenzo Drone, uh, I can't speak for him, but Quandra Diggs, obviously he's a terrific safety as well. I'd say the biggest difference between those guys, right, that I'm comping him to, Tayshawn Gibson, Ryan Clark, uh, Lorenzo Drone, Quandra Diggs, those guys didn't go in the third round. So because of their traits and ability, they went uh, to Sean Gibson, six-round pick. Ryan Clark, undrafted. Lorenzo Jerome, undrafted. Quadra Diggs, six rounds. So we're talking about two six-round guys and an undrafted guy. And his traits say more of a guy that goes in that range, but whatever people are seeing on film, which I saw some really good stuff on film, they're like, no, 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 no. This guy is a third-round caliber safety. And that's what the 49ers are getting. I think what I – the thing I took away the most is 49ers are definitely building their secondary around guys who take the ball away. We want to take the ball away. We want high-level guys, smart guys, physical, aggressive guys that will take the ball away. Ten interceptions over the last two years, can't deny playmaking ability. And when you watch the film, and again, on these cut-ups that I showed, there's not one takeaway. But one, the big takeaway is how he hustles to the ball, and I just understand how he puts himself in position to consistently get to the ball. Rock. All right. So that is Jair Tig Brown, safety out of Penn State. We're going to continue to get to some of these receivers, uh, cornerbacks that the 49ers either drafted or signed. Break those guys down, dive into their film. The only way I can. Make sure if you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a girlfriend. <laughs> Whatever y'all got to do, man. Let's blow this up. Let's run these numbers up, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I enjoyed watching this film and definitely breaking them down. Look forward to seeing Jair Brown and the impact he has for the 49ers. Day one safety? I'm not sure, but we'll find out. Peace.